Your true wealth is your time and freedom. Money is just a tool for trading your time. It's a container to store your economic energy until you're ready to deploy it. But the whole world has been turned away from real money and has been fooled into using currency. A deceitful imposter that is silently stealing your two most valuable assets, your time and your freedom. Welcome to the rabbit hole. We are entering a period of financial crisis that is the greatest the world has ever known. The wealth transfer that will take place during this decade is the greatest wealth transfer in history. Wealth is never destroyed, it is merely transferred, and that means that on the opposite side of every crisis there is an opportunity. I believe that the best investment that you can make in your lifetime is your own education. Education on the history of money, education on finance, education on how the global economy works, education on how all of these guys, the central bankers, the stock market, how they can cheat you, how they can scam you. If you learn what is going on and how the financial world works, you can put yourself on the correct side of this wealth transfer. Winston Churchill once said that the further you look into the past, the further that you can see into the future. This program is all about creating your own crystal ball, being able to gaze into the future, being able to change this crisis, the greatest crisis in the history of mankind, into your great opportunity. hidden secrets of money, some of them are hidden in plain sight. They're like right in front of you. Uh, the way the monetary system works is something that isn't actually hidden away from all of us. It's out in the open, but it's complex and people just don't, they can't see how it works. It's hard for them to imagine that we're living in such a hoax. Others are meant to be secret, but the truth is slowly coming out, like the Federal Reserve being a private corporation and not really part of the US government. But when I started studying this, uh, what I found was that there was no place that I could point people to where they could get it all in one spot. And so I basically decided to write my book about it and consolidate monetary history, economics, the markets, uh, fundamentals of gold and silver. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors in economics and I've sort of made it my job to lift the fog for people. Welcome to Egypt. This is where it all began. Roughly 5,000 years ago, the Egyptians started using gold and silver as their predominant form of currency. But it was not yet money. The pieces of gold and silver that they were using were odd sizes and weights, odd purities, so it still was not interchangeable, where each unit is the same as the next. This meant that nothing really had a price yet. You couldn't put a price of so many coins on something because they didn't have coins yet. Trade was still difficult. It was still a guessing game when it came to the exchange of values. One of the reasons that we are in the financial mess that we are today globally is that people do not understand the difference between currency and money. Currency is a medium of exchange a unit of account. It is portable, durable, divisible, and something called fungible. Fungible means that each unit is the same as the next unit. A dollar in my pocket buys the same amount as a dollar in your pocket. Money is all of those things plus a store of value over a long period of time. Even financial planners, bankers, your accountant, they don't understand the difference between currency and money. The currency in your pocket is a medium of exchange. It's a unit of account because it's got numbers on it. It's somewhat durable, it's portable, it's divisible in that you can make change, and it's fungible. A dollar in my pocket buys the same amount as a dollar in your pocket. But because governments can print more and more and more of it and dilute the currency supply, it's continually transferring wealth out of your pocket, out of your bank account, to the government. 
and to the banking system. The reason that gold and silver are the optimum form of money is because of their properties. It's an easy medium of exchange because gold and silver store a large amount of value in a very small area. It's a unit of account. Pure gold has the same value all over the planet. So an ounce of gold buys the same amount here in Egypt as it would in China or in the United States. It's durable. The same gold that Egyptians were using in trade 5,000 years ago is still here with us today. It does not corrode. It's divisible. You can make change with it. It's very portable. You could use something like oil as money. It's just that you can't carry around a barrel of oil on your back. It's fungible. Pure gold is the same wherever it is on Earth. Pure silver is the same wherever it is on Earth. It's limited in quantity. That's the reason that it maintains its purchasing power. Governments cannot print it. Over the last 5,000 years, only gold and silver have maintained their purchasing power. There have been thousands upon thousands of fiat currencies, currencies that are unbacked by gold or silver, and they have all gone to zero. It's a 100% failure rate. In the past several years, I've, I've spoken in many countries about the crisis that's coming, and a lot of people think that they're going to be okay in their country, that it's only going to happen to the United States or maybe the United States in Europe. Uh, but what they don't realize is that this is a global phenomenon. I've got to show you something here. This is a base currency in the United States. This is the number of paper dollars that exist, basically. It took 200 years to go from no dollars in existence to 825 billion. And then we had the bailouts, and then we had QE1, quantitative easing, one, then QE2, and then we had QE3, and then QE4, and then soon we're going to have QE57 and QE382. <laughs> and uh, it isn't just here. This is what the Canadian currency supply looks like. This is Australia, South Africa, Russia. Now, this starts out in just the year 2001, and this is like 18 times more currency in existence in a little over a decade. Uh, here's Singapore, same story. Look at that, since the crisis, just bam. India, China, every government on the planet is doing this insane deficit spending and expanding their currency supplies, uh, doing bailouts, and history shows that th there is no example of this turning out well. So that all seems pretty scary. However, uh, th you know, this is going to happen, and you can only play the hand that you're dealt, but the great news is that gold and silver always end up doing an accounting of the expansion of the currency supplies. Basically, the will of the public and the free markets. When governments do this kind of stuff to their currency supply, they debase it. Eventually, it comes back in inflation. People sense the loss of their purchasing power. They rush back to gold and silver, and they bid the value of the gold and silver up in the country until it meets or exceeds the value of all the currency in circulation. This is a process that's been going on over and over again throughout history except this time it's happening on a global scale. It has never before happened in all countries at once. And that means that this is the greatest wealth transfer in history. Therefore, it's the greatest opportunity in history, and it's not going to happen again in your lifetime.